Hello, this is Robert Perkins, the immigration professor. Welcome today to my video on unlawful presence and waivers or pardons of unlawful presence. And you can see all of my videos on my website, um, www.immigration-professor.com. Or if you have questions about your specific case, please call our office at 310-384. 0200. We do represent people all across the United States in different immigration matters. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about unlawful presence, what it is and how to get it waived or pardoned. And it, this is going to be a series of videos. We can't just do it in one video. It's a complicated topic. And it affects a lot of people, particularly when people have, have come in illegally and later on they attempt to marry a U.S. citizen or gain some other kind of immigration benefit. So, first of all, let's talk about unlawful presence itself. Um, what is unlawful presence? Well, the law defines unlawful presence as being here without the permission of immigration. Being here without the permission of immigration. How can that happen? Well, you are unlawfully present if you have entered illegally Without, which means without a visa, without a visa, in any sense. That's one way to become unlawful, unlawfully present. And the second way is if you are here on a visa, and the visa has expired. There's one interesting thing about that, which is that there are some visas that actually have no expiration date. These are, for example, student visas, F1 student visas. Another one is the J1 exchange visa, which is used for students, trainees, doctors, and other people. These particular visas are valid for duration of status. In other words, they don't have a valid an expiration date they are good for as long as the person is in school. And the person may have a little um, pink slip um, called the DS-2019 that might say, yes, you know, the school program ends on such and such a date, but because their visa is valid for as long as they're in school, and theoretically they can change schools, they can go from a bachelor's to a master's, etc., uh, immigration has said that People on these kind of visas do not uh, have unlawful presence until there is a finding of unlawful presence, either by an immigration judge or an immigration officer. And that finding of unlawful presence cannot be backdated. So, um, other people who do have unlawful presence, I mean, the most common example is someone enters as a tourist on a B-1 or B-2 visa, those have an, an expiration date. They have a set date that they have um, expired. And after that date, uh, a person would then start to accumulate what's called unlawful presence. Unlawful presence is a, a bar. The unlawful presence can be a bar to immigrating in the, to the United States. What the law says is that if you have 180 days of unlawful presence, which is six months, you are barred for three years. And if you have more than one year of unlawful presence, you're barred from ten years. The unlawful presence bar, interestingly enough, because of the way that it's written, um, it's written that if you have 180 days unlawfully here, in one of those situations I just described, let's say, for example, you come in on a tourist visa. Your tourist visa expires in June of one year, and then six months later, you're, you're leaving to try to come back on a student visa or another visa. You would then be barred by the embassy for three years from entering the United States. Now, I want to emphasize that these bars are pretty rigid. Let's say, for example, um, you know, six months after that, you married a United States citizen, you still would be barred um, for the three years from coming back to the United States. The one-year bar is also triggered by leaving and trying to get in. 
And again, the bar applies whether you're trying for another tourist visa, whether you're marrying a citizen, whatever it is you're doing, you're facing these bars. So they are very important bars, and uh, they can, however, be waived or excused. You can see all of my videos on unlawful presence and other issues on my website, immigration-professor.com. Uh, or if you have a question about your specific case, you can call us at 310-384-0200. One thing I want to emphasize is that there are exceptions to what we call the unlawful presence bar. The one exception I talked about is students, okay, and J1s who have duration of status. So these are exceptions. Another exception is when someone claims asylum. So if they've applied for asylum and their application is non-frivolous, which means it's legitimate, um, even if they haven't yet been approved, the time that they are waiting uh, to get an answer on their asylum, they are not considered to be unlawfully present. The other people that are exempt are minors, that is, um, children under the age of 18, uh, do not accrue any unlawful presence. So let's say you have an example of a child. I actually had a case like this that was being adopted and the child was here unlawfully for over a year and uh, went down to Mexico to interview for their visa through their new adoptive parents. Uh, even though they had been illegal, they were under 18, so their presence here was not unlawful and uh, they were able to come back in without any bars. So they are also exempted from this unlawful presence bar. Um, another um, important one is for battered spouses. So if you're someone that has been subjected to extreme cruelty or battering by a U.S. citizen spouse, uh, you're also exempt from um, unlawful presence. There are other um, exemptions for unlawful presence, but they're a little bit too much for this uh, video. Again, if you have specific questions about a case, please call our office at 310-384-0200. Or um, you can also see all of my immigration videos on my website, immigration-professor.com. So this will end the first video that we have on unlawful presence. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how do you get out of unlawful presence. There is a way to get a waiver or a pardon of unlawful presence. And again, the most common case is, is when uh, someone comes in illegally, they've entered illegally, and they marry a U.S. citizen. And for various reasons, they can't process their case in the United States, so they have to go out of the U.S., triggering these bars. How do they get out of it? And that will be the subject of my next video. Thank you very much.